Hello, everybody. My name is Ian from Starship Adventures, and thank you for coming in today and watching the video. Today, we're going to talk about Sarnet. Sarnet is Florida's statewide connected repeater system. And yeah, it sounds great, doesn't it? it a, a, a whole statewide connected amateur radio repeater system where you can jump on the air in Pensacola and talk to your friend down in Isla Mirada. Sounds like a great plan. Sounds like a great system. And what a service to amateur radio. And what a service to emergency services and to keeping communication between the two. Well, at least that's what I thought. Recently, the SARNET was uh, taken over by the Florida State Emergency Management. And like with most things that get taken over by a larger uh, entity, uh, and it's kind of a secondary thing, uh, things get pushed to the side. For instance, our repeater was down here for eight months uh, in Fort Myers, and uh, this is an area that's affected by, oh, I don't know, major hurricanes and things like that, and our repeater was down for eight months, and we never really got an explanation as to why or when it was coming back up. It just suddenly came back online one day. So we've got this beautiful system. It's 40 plus repeaters. They're all on UHF. And you would think this is an amazing thing. You would think, here we go. Finally, a, a, a major system that puts people in contact all across the state of Florida, the state with the largest hurricane threat to have a system like this would be amazing so that people can stay in contact with their family and people can have a radio in an emergency that someone will answer. Well, not so much. Sorry, not so much. Let's talk seriously about the SARNET. First, you would think a statewide repeater system would, uh, would be a great place to hear weather advisories, right? You'd think it'd be a, a great place to just, I'll just keep that radio on in my car, I'll keep that radio on in my shack, uh, I'll keep that radio on somewhere, and that way I can hear the guys talking about the weather on there, and I know when there's some bad weather coming, I can hear them giving out the weather advisories on there, I can hear them talking about the tornado warnings and the severe thunderstorm warnings. <laughs> not so much they don't allow it they don't allow them to read out the weather advisories in real time on there even though there's a lot of people around uh, the state that would certainly take a turn doing it uh, they won't allow it and what what an amazing waste to have this great statewide connected repeater system and to not allow weather advisories to go over it. I personally believe that it should broadcast out all the tornado warnings automatically, statewide, uh, because really, it's not that many of them. You know, we go entire weeks and weeks without getting a tornado warning in the state of Florida. So this is something that they could put on the system and warn us when that, nope, not so much, not interested. They don't even want you coming on and saying that you heard a weather alert. So you think, well, it's gotta be a great place to be able to discuss things like our club and when our club meetings are and maybe discuss our local repeaters so people can hear about other things. And it'd be a great place to go on and talk about our club meeting and, and, and talk to other hams around the state about, about uh, the clubs and the different things that we're doing and contesting and all that. <laughs> Not so much. They don't allow any of that. They don't want discussions of your clubs on there. They don't want discussions about any of that kind of stuff on there. They really want no mention of local amateur radio stuff at all on there. Uh, they're kind of snooty about it. Uh, it's really kind of a waste. So, but a statewide system like this would be great. Wouldn't it be a great thing if like people could come on like on the CB and say, hey, there's a bad wreck on Dale Mayberry in Tampa. You might want to avoid westbound. Or, hey, 
Southbound 95, as you're coming into mile marker 155, we've got a bad crash that backed up for miles. Why would, you know, that would be something we could put on Sarnet, right? I mean, we all listen to it in our car. You got hundreds and hundreds of radios moving all around the state of Florida listening to this channel. So it'd be a great place to be able to discuss road traffic emergencies, right? Well, not so much. They don't allow it. They don't want you discussing anything about the road, the traffic, or anything like that. But what about major road closures? Again, not so much. They don't even want you to talk about complete closures of interstates on there. They want no discussion of things that would actually be helpful to you out there on the road. What about huge incidents of magnitude, hazard announcements, warnings, um, things observed by SARNET users uh, along the road, like big brush fires and things like that, right? We certainly should give that stuff out over SARNET so, so people would know what's going on out there, right? Wouldn't that be a good use? That would be a good use of SARNET, right? <sighs> Again, not so much. They do not allow it. They don't want you to discuss anything like that on there. Uh, even though it's the statewide connected amateur radio system that's supposedly run by the Emergency Management Center in Florida, uh, they really don't want you discussing any emergencies on there at all. It's kind of a shame, really, if you think about it. Well, so at least we've got this thing for, like, large-scale evacuations, right? so that we can talk to people during evacuations and we can give out announcements about what roads are open for evacuations and what roads your family can get on and get out of the state when the big category five hurricanes coming. What well, that's a great thing, right? At least we've got Sarnet for that. We've got Sarnet so we can turn it on and we can hear somebody on there talking about the roads and, and what roads we can get on this evacuation route. What evacuation route should I get on? At least we've got Sarnet for that, right? <laughs> hmm. Not so much. There'll be no announcements on there during major, huge, catastrophic incidents in Florida. They don't do announcements on there, even though they're allowed. Weather and disaster announcements are allowed but they won't allow them. They don't want them. So at least we've got the ham radio towers around the Sarnet. At least we've got this system so that we can have conversations with other hams, right? I mean, I can just key it up and talk to other hams, right? At least just to test my radio. That's cool, right? I mean, I can just call up and say, hey, uh, and talk for a few minutes about something, right? I mean, that's not a problem. At least we've got that, right? <laughs> yeah, they really don't want idle chat or discussion on there at all. They would really like to just keep it clear for what we don't know, but they would like to keep it clear. So they really don't want your errant conversations on there. And they would, they would really prefer that you just like, don't use it at all. Just leave it for them. Um, they, they don't want communications between licensed operators. If there's any other way possible, is what they say, for you to make that call. Well, guess what? We all have a cell phone in our pocket. So what they're telling you is they don't want you on Sarnet. And that's pretty much it, right? If you can make the call some other way, other than Sarnet, they want you to do that. Well, I can make the call four other ways, but I wanted to use Sarnet because I'm a ham radio operator. No, we don't want none of that. Um, what about Skywarn? I mean, we. What about what about if I see a tornado? Now I'm now I'm Skywarn, but let's say someone is not a Skywarn spotter and they see a tornado. They actually see a tornado. That's something we would want on here, right? No, they don't. They only want official Skywarn spotters to spot and only to use Sarnet to spot if there's no other means possible to contact the National Weather Service. In other words, they really don't want any Skywarn traffic on there at all. So at least we've still got this system, right, that we can use during a disaster so that we can let our family know that we're okay, right? 
so that we can call somebody further up the state and say, hey, call my sister and let her know that we survived. Our house is gone, but we survived, right? We could at least do that. At least gives us the ability to do that, right? No. During emergencies, the Sarnet is disallowed to be used for all amateur radio operators except those officially authorized by the emergency management in Florida. So in other words, you, it's not even there for you. You're not going to hear anything useful on it, and it's not there for you to use. It's pretty much useless. We've got this wonderful system that's, well, pretty much useless out there. They literally shut it down during emergencies. During Ian, we were all told we were not allowed to use it. We were told we were not allowed to use the system unless it was a life and death emergency. That's it. That's the only way that my radio is allowed to transmit on the statewide system. And then it sat there in silence most of the day. Um, I listened quite a bit while the wind was howling outside. And... Um, there was very little traffic on there. It would have been really nice to have been hearing reports of what's going on. It would have been nice to be able to, to hear the warnings going out on there. It would have been nice to have that companion during the storm. But what I had was pretty much dead air, uh, except for a few cryptic messages between EOCs or something. There really was not much on there at all. Now, is the SARNET really that necessary to keep the EOCs connected? No. They have sat phone that connects all of the EOCs in the state of Florida, and they have had that system for 30 years. It's nothing new. They are connected through fiber optic, through the internet. They are connected through Ma Bell, through Twisted Pair. They are connected in many, many different ways. They do not need Sarnet to stay in touch with other EOCs. I think there was one time where a single EOC uh, had lost its primary, secondary, and tertiary ability to contact the state EOC and turn to Sarnet to get a hold of the state EOC and convey a message or two. Um, so they clear this thing off. They won't let you use it. They completely disallow you to use it. And right at a time when we need it, at the time when we need it most to, to, so that we can all stay in touch out here there's there's not that many hams out here we should at least be able to use that system to be able to relay messages up and down the state to our families and stuff after a storm nope disallowed they don't care i i'll tell you what it, it's the biggest waste in the world as far as i'm concerned no traffic reports no weather reports no hazard reports no updates on evacuation routes They'll give nothing on there. They don't even want you telling them there's a tornado that you're seeing with your own eyes. They don't even want to hear that. They want you off of Sarnet. If you can make the communication some other way, they don't want you on Sarnet. There's a select few that are allowed. There's some guys up in North Florida. They're allowed to stay on there all day long and talk. There's one guy in Georgia that talks uh, for five or ten minutes every morning, even though it's against the rules. Yeah, I don't know. It's one of the, just like with ham radio, it's kind of an elitist group of people that are allowed to talk on it. And the rest of us are completely discouraged from using it or getting on it for any reason at all. They're so bad that if you get on there and they don't want you on there, they've got it dialed in on their computer at home or at work. And they go on there and in, in three keystrokes, they can turn off that tower site from the other 40-something tower sites, and you're isolated. You don't even realize it. If they, don't, uh, if they don't like what they hear on there, they immediately just shut off that tower site. And it's stifling of free speech. It's, uh, it's crazy. I, I don't like it. Uh, the disconnecting of repeater sites, it, it goes on every day. And if they don't even like it, if they don't like anything about, if they don't like it, you got a Roger beep on the end, you know, when you release it, it goes bleep. They don't like that. They'll, they'll shut off a repeater just because you're having a conversation with somebody and you've got a Roger beep. 
they they don't like any kind of tones or anything on there. They, they get really picky about that stuff, and they will get on there, and they will squash you on the radio uh, if you have a Roger beep uh, or if you've talked too long, um, and it's just... Uh, it's just kind of crazy. They even have a threat in their rules that says that all errant key ups, all key ups, you know, kerchunks, all kerchunks will be reported to the FCC field office. I mean, if that's not ridiculous, <coughs> they're going to get blocked. Anyway, I got to tell you guys, these new rules came out. I read it last night. I had a hard time sleeping last night. I got to get up this morning and do a video on this because I cannot believe what I'm reading here. I mean, I knew it was bad, but now that I'm, I see it all spelled out and I know how it was not there for us during Ian. It was not there for us during Irma. It was not there for us at any other time when we had a bad storm um, because they shut it down for use by the common people and they reserve it for use by the government who should have their own damn radio system right and think about that most of these repeaters are privately owned even though the con the connectivity is owned by the state it's kind of a public private partnership i guess if you will but trust me, they commandeer the whole thing during disasters. And they'll shut off your repeater right in the middle of a disaster if they don't like what you're saying on there. So, I guess the moral to the story is, I used to listen to Sarnet 24 hours a day. I stream it on Broadcastify. I'm probably going to be ending that soon. Because it's become a useless channel. No useful information is allowed to be disseminated on there people are not allowed to even say what their eyes can see on there so why should I sit and listen to it all day do you know what I hear 80% of the traffic on there is the four or five elitists that use it all the time testing and disconnecting different repeaters and policing the airwaves basically some days they'll turn off four five six repeaters why because several people were having a casual conversation. We don't do casual conversations. Yeah, unless you're one of them, then it's okay. I don't know. It's like everything else in ham radio. It's, it's a shit show that is run by four or five or six elitists. It's an oligarchy, whatever you want to call it. Anyway, it kind of sucks. I used to love Sarnet, and as they've clamped down on it over the years, uh, it's now something that's not even really worth having in your radio. You're not going to be allowed to use it if you need it, uh, and uh, they're not going to make they're going to make damn sure you don't get any useful information on it too. So, kind of a worthless thing. I suggest during a storm, um, whatever your local Air Aries or EOC repeater that they're monitoring, if you can find one that they're monitoring. Monitor that and monitor the 5-2. Um, but by all means, uh, I'd stay off Sarnet because they, they, they don't want to do anything with it. The rest of us simple little ham radio operators out here. Well, there you go, guys. That's my rant. I didn't mean to go too crazy on this this morning. But I got to tell you, it really stuck in my craw overnight when I read this thing that basically, basically tells me to stay off the thing and don't expect any useful information to come over it what a shame what an absolute shame and the people involved in this mess shame on you shame on you for taking an amateur radio resource and commandeering it back and making it a government state resource to fill a gap that I don't even think you have it's ridiculous and if this is the state's price for that interconnectivity, the price is too high. Let's throw it on All-Star. This is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous that the state has this much power over our amateur radio system. And that's why they did it. The government will give you stuff all day long. Because once you take something from the government, they have you on the string. 
You have to follow the rules that that money has attached to it. What a shame. All right, well, Sarnet, it was nice, but uh, there's so many repeaters down, they're not getting fixed. It's taken eight months to get this one fixed. Uh, and there's not really much reason to even listen to it anymore. I don't get on it. I don't feel like I'm welcome. I wouldn't bother. All right, guys, there you go. That's your uh, amateur radio tip for the day. Sarnet, I wouldn't bother. They don't want to talk to you, so don't talk to them. All right, guys, I guess that's about it. My name is Ian. This is Starship Adventures, and I hope to see you guys on the next adventure. Just don't call me on Sarnet. I probably won't.